Mr. Investor Lot, welcome back to the channel, baby. We had some great news today. We are roaring. Yep, Bio Nano Genomics is roaring. We're up 8.3%, as you can see here. Nearly reaching back into the sixes, but this short term price action doesn't really matter to me. The most interesting things that came out today was the information regarding the acceptance of Cytopia. When this information hit today, people started to see, you know what, maybe they have something here. The Sapphire system has now been accepted for optical genome mapping at several sites within the UK. And within the UK, we're talking about our national health system. It's actually called the National Health Service Yahoo, get it right. So today we'll be discussing this article, but we'll also be looking into some of the names in the article. This is a great first step for us, but I think so much more is to come. I became interested in this guy. I wanted to know who he was, what he's about, and I found out a lot of information. So first of all, if you're new around here, my name is Mick Miguel, we look for big juicy growth stocks and we've been covering bio nano genomics since it was a two dollar stock all the way up to fifteen dollars sixty nine and throughout the whole time when it's been dropping through the market i haven't sold a single share i've added some shares i've actually got a part-time job now to try and buy more shares of bio nano genomics and nano dimension we love to cover everything nndm and bingo related all the presentations i try and get you in the live streams that are exclusive for academics for people that are big within the genetics industry and then i try and feed you back that juicy information if you're able to support my channel please click the join button just above my head over there or you can join my patreon but if you're unable to just you hitting like on this video and subscribing means the world to me we've now got 9,000 people here and it's amazing it's like one big family always remember none of this is financial advice it's for entertainment only Okay, let's get into it. First things first, our beloved Joe Butler said that 12 months of his life was well spent. He's really proud of this. Free NHS sites in 18 months now. More to come, hopefully. So this press release today sent a lot of investors roaring. There were super hypes. They were just so happy. So this was one of the official articles you can see here. Yahoo article, April 21st, 2021. But if we remember rightly so, let's go back in time. This article is actually from June 26th, 2020. And when people are experimenting, they're using the, you know, bionanogenomic sapphire they're piloting we've got that largest canadian hospital in canada test piloting the bio nanogenomics sapphire so now this article was talking about you know the uk nhs it was talking about medical college of wisconsin and it was talking about a leading south korean university they were amongst the newest adopters of bio nanogenomics sapphire and when king's college london actually acquired the sapphire system they wanted to perform a study on 210 leukemia patients so initially they took it on a rental basis i believe and their objective was to validate sapphire's performance in digital cytogenetics with the ultimate goal of replacing the use of standard cytogenetic methods so those traditional methods in their laboratories with bio nano genoming imaging altogether. so let's go back to the press release for today and it looks like there's been a lot of progress because you can see here they've now announced adoption of the sapphire system for optical genome mapping and these are two large laboratories belonging to the national health system of the united kingdom so guys in terms of application both sites are using sapphire to actually characterize the genomes of patients with blood cancers however this is interesting here the site in Belfast will also evaluate Sapphire for the detection of structural variants in patients with developmental delay, infertility, rare disease, and other genetic diseases as well. When the article spoke about this guy, Dr. Anwar al haq he is the lead clinical scientist and deputy clinical director for the National Health Service in hematology and pathology at King's College Hospital. He basically said how essential and how key it is to have a timely identification of the structural variations for providing diagnosis and treatment decisions for blood cancers. He basically spoke about the traditional techniques that use a combination of techniques such as karyotyping, fish and SMP arrays to provide a kind of comprehensive analysis of everything. The problems with the techniques are they are expensive, they take a lot of work, labor intensive and time consuming and they require a diverse and skilled workforce. So let's take a look at this guy. When you pop into his LinkedIn Anwar al haq you can see here his title is Centenary Project Director at King's College Hospital NHS and when he explains his role on his LinkedIn look what this guy is about and look at what he's currently doing. So he's been working at King's College Hospital for about seven to eight years. He's leading so many projects. One of the projects is with this Viapath group. So I thought, what is Viapath? Viapath is a unique partnership of clinical, scientific and operational expertise with a mission to transform pathology services in the UK. Our organization is built on scientific expertise, providing a service that helps clinicians create better outcomes for their patients every day. Popped into Viapath, you can see here, scientific organization with a clinical purpose. So they 
work closely with the NHS. They have a lot of partnerships and they're working on C19 at the moment as well, which could be interesting. Because these guys are trying to set the standard for the future of pathology, let's look at the definition. So pathology is a branch of medical science primarily concerning the cause, origin and nature of disease. We want to find out what causes disease. It involves examination of tissues, organs, bodily fluids and autopsies in order to study and diagnose disease. And according to this branch of the NHS that we're looking at genomics education program, in cancer genomics is enabling more precise diagnosis, treatment and risk prediction. The work of a histopathologist now regularly includes integrating both morphological information and genomic information in order to inform clinical decisions. Genomics is also enabling progress in terms of better subtyping of cancers and the development of targeted treatments. So these guys want to find, you know, this guy is a director of a company, Viopath, who wants to transform pathology services. They want to find out what is the cause of disease. And when Dr. Al Haq was talking about Safai, he was saying a number of other piloted studies have already demonstrated the clinical validity of optical genome mapping for identifying structural variations in both acquired and constitutional abnormalities. We are undertaking a pilot validation study of the Safai system to introduce a single automated cytogenetic workflow providing high resolution analysis of the genome in a timely manner. Ultimately, this is going to benefit, you know, patient outcomes. So with this guy trying to change the workflow, he's already got a business in which is trying to change pathology. Let's take a look back at the investor presentation for BioNanogenomics and look at the problems with workflow. So this is who we're going after. We're going after the cytogenetics market and they're saying cytogenetics workflow is a nightmare. You can see here all of the different samples. You've got fetal tissue, you've got blood, you've got amnio and CVS, bone marrow, and there's just so many different things going on here. It looks crazy. Whereas Sapphire is replacing this workflow and you can see here they want to replace the traditional cyto methods and they're going to offer a one-stop shop for detecting all structural variations recommended by medical guidelines. So simple. Get the sample, DNA extraction, sample loaded, sample analyzed. This guy also added that he thinks it's ultimately going to replace the need for a wide range of cytogenetic methods. So you know what we're saying about Cytopia, replacing all of them. Currently used in diagnostic laboratories and will lead to a quicker turnaround time with better defined structural variation data. Quicker turnaround time, cheaper, more efficient. And this was also reinforced by the other NHS site that adopted it, the laboratory in Belfast City. So Dr. Shirley Hegarty said that their current site is relying on all of the traditional cytogenetic techniques like the guy above, talking about karyotyping fish and SNP array. And when they were looking about the future of their business, you know, the future of the healthcare system over there, they said they were evaluating their options for the future. And what was attractive about Sapphire system is that it has the potential to replace several different clinical tests in one assay, avoiding the need for them to invest in all these other traditional multiple cytogenetic instruments, saving them time, money and streamlining the workflow. So one of the biggest things that I'm constantly bullish about as well, when I was in ACMG, I was seeing everything else they're exploring. Here they're saying, you know, they're going to be using optical genome mapping to identify structural variants in patients with constitutional and acquired chromosomal abnormalities. But they're also going to be looking at developmental delay, infertility, rare disease, leukemia and lymphoma patients. The studies were so key and important for sites like this to give them, you know, proof of concept for them to actually test pilot it. If they see others are doing studies, doing amazing things, discovering things, then it helps sites like this to adopt it. Now you can see here, this is from Eric Holmlin. He said, what we are seeing with the recent adoption within the UK NHS and other sites is a validation of the change in our sales model that we adopted in the first half of 2020. Yep, they changed the sales model. They said, have a little bit of this, little bit of that, have a try. And here he said, our focus is on accelerating the process for researchers to implement optical genome mapping with Sapphire to shorten the time it takes to generate data. Wow, it's going to get even faster. A faster implementation brings revenue sooner compared to a traditional capital sales cycle and early access to Sapphire data may raise awareness of that data even sooner. So he was talking about King's College London being one of the largest NHS testing centers for blood cancers and serves a diverse patient population. Fun fact on King's College London. King's College London is one of the top universities in the world and one of the oldest in England. It was founded in 1829 and it's a multi-faculty research-led institution with 7,200 staff and it has an annual turnover, yeah? 680 million pounds. And when you're talking about the Northern Ireland Regional Genetics Laboratory, it's the only NHS genetic testing center in Northern Ireland and it provides services to the entire population. So we've got them on a rental agreement. We are thrilled that these NHS centers have chosen to invest in optical genome mapping with the Sapphire system as they begin developing and validating assays on a path to modernizing their workflows. We believe their success can spark potential adoption by many other NHS testing labs across the UK. If we go back into here, remember what I said before, there's some previous videos. We were talking about the Russell Group 
group, the universities, if the top universities, the top Russell Group universities are conducting research and they're finding amazing things with the Sapphire machine, the Russell Group actually has 24 members of world-class research intensive universities and they get a hell of a lot of government funding and you can see here they produce two-thirds of the world leading research across UK universities. There's over 260,000 jobs they're supporting and they inject nearly 87 billion pounds into the national economy every year. When Eric Holmland's talking about one of the universities sparking adoption, I know that we've already got a couple of these under our belt. I remember seeing University of Nottingham having it in there as we can see here. Queen Mary's also posted some jobs for optical genome mapping so I know they've got it there as well. I saw it on their page and as more of these universities come to adopt Sapphire you're going to see across the NHS a lot of these hospitals are going to adopt it. World leading research, proof of concept and the next step is it getting written into the guidelines. If it's written into the guidelines and we have to utilize it in order to you know maintain patient care, have improved patient outcomes, save people's lives which actually includes three core pillars. If we want to improve patient outcomes we have to use genomics and utilize it in the right way. So we're going to have diagnosis and personalized medicine, we're going to have prevention and we're going to have research and each of these three pillars have their own database, they have their own infrastructure that's going to bring its own population and data both genomic and complementary. Libraries involving a hundred thousand participants with rare diseases and cancer, clinical diagnostic testing here for NHS patients including at least 500,000 whole genomes in England by 2024. You've also got this UK biobank facility involving 500,000 participants healthy at the time of recruitment and you've got NIHR bio resource you can see here it involves another population of around 200,000 to 400,000 participants with rare or common diseases who are healthy at the time of recruitment as well. UK is pushing it to be at the forefront of genomics they're in a race with you know USA, China, everybody is racing to see who can become the globally dominant leader in genomics. After seeing some sales and after seeing uh, people coming out you know saying they've just received their sapphire when we look at this Q4 2021 kind of target milestone we want to reach 150 systems which is a 50% increase over the year end 2020. I think establishments will continue to adopt the sapphire system across the place especially when it gets written into guidelines. As we know that's one of the aims in South Africa with Joe and Kotze the head of genetics at Indalo Bio saying the goal is to formally register our sapphire based laboratory as a training laboratory for the field of cytogenomics and write optical genome mapping into the South African cytogenetic guidelines. From all across the world you're seeing people saying they believe in optical genome mapping and that it has the potential to revolutionize cytogenetic analysis in Africa and the rest of the world. So this guy said some magical things about optical genome mapping in the sapphire and actually with all the other projects that he's working on this guy is currently a board member of the genomics network alliance and the south london nhs genomics medicine center look at this project he's working on this project follows the prime minister's pledge to establish the uk as a world leader in genetic research and to transform patient care by unlocking the power of dna this national program will focus on cancer and rare diseases and will enable pioneering research to decode 100,000 human genomes a scale not seen anywhere else in the world he's also talking about cost you know the cost of sequencing falling he wants to develop precision medicine based clinical pathways sapphire baby we're cheaper we're faster we have a great workflow use us alongside what you're currently using because you know we can replace the traditional standards and for everything that's short read and long reads if you need to find structural variations you cannot locate we can help you map that out baby so this project's objective is to develop the infrastructure and capabilities across clinical pathways in order to target treatments more effectively again this guy's well connected african healthcare they're in partnership with african investors this is crazy imagine this we are developing models of healthcare delivery to support the development of centers of excellence. This work contributes to the diversification and development of African trades with particular reference to the medical tourist market in healthcare. We also provide healthcare consultancy advice to potential investors. So this guy is actually also well connected with Abu Dhabi in the Middle East, commissioning the pathology service at KCH's clinic in Abu Dhabi. So our clinic aims to provide care in several specialities where there is an identified need in Abu Dhabi. The clinic is supported by a state of the art purpose built pathology service providing a wide repertoire of tests. G42 baby who remembers that? One of the biggest boys in the Middle East. As you can see here it features the Middle East's third largest third generation sequencing platform and is planning to add state of the art equipment for optical mapping to its facilities allowing better structural variation studies in genomics. The omics center balances TGS with next generation sequencing platforms and will also leverage the Sanger sequencing method for validating novel genetic mutations. So if people in positions of power are developing and working with the sapphire they're basically saying they ultimately want to replace the need for wide range of cytogenetic methods and if these guys are saying
again, you know, a number of other pilot studies have already demonstrated the clinical validity of optical genome mapping with all the connections and the power he has within the genomic community here in the UK, in Africa and in Abu Dhabi. Let's hope to see some juicy sales. Finally, let's finish up with this update. So we have here Dr. Ravindra Kohi. This man will be talking about C19. This information was released by BioNano Genomics. It's a webinar coming up here. It's going to be on April 28th at 7 a.m. And if you'd like to register, make sure you just go to BioNano Genomics on the Twitter and click there. What this guy is going to be presenting to us is his findings on host genome analysis of structural variations by optical genome mapping in patients with C19. So I think this is going to be about, you know, genetic predisposition to the disease. This man is a legend. I tried to hit him up in the email so I could probably get some like information from him and see, you know, what are you up to? Let me know what's going on. I want to see what your studies are, your findings. But he did an answer, baby. But I'll be happy to see what he comes up with with this. I think I'm going to be at university when this is on, so I can't really live stream it. But what I'm going to do is when I pop out of university, I'll just watch it over and try and give you guys a summary. Also, just wanted to show you what the analysts are saying. They're saying strong buy with three people saying buy. They're saying there's 139% upside potential for the next 12 months, giving a medium price target range of $13.92. And this is with a forecasted high of $15 and a low of $12.75. So I can't tell you to buy. I can't tell you to hold. I can't tell you to sell. I'm not a financial advisor and this is for entertainment only, but I'm currently grinding. I've just got a part-time job. So I'm trying to work as hard as I can so I can buy up as much bio nano genomics and nano dimensions as I can. I think the team at bio nano genomics is doing a tremendous job. Somebody also asked, oh, nano nozzle knight, Joe Butler. They said, well done, Joe. Is your role sales related? And Joe said, hell yeah, I'm the business manager of the UK and Ireland. So all my cowboys, I just want to wish you the very best. Thank you so much for watching. And I want to hear your comments and feelings today because we've had a nice run up now. Everybody was stressed. They were saying, oh, it's so painful to see the reds. Painful to see it, you know, going down. Some people were buying more. So yeah, let me know your thoughts and feelings. Thank you so much for watching. If you're able to join channel memberships, please click the join above my head. It's only 99 cents. You can choose any tier and it will really help me create videos. But if you're unable to join, just you hitting like and clicking subscribe means the world to me. Thank you so much for watching. Mr. Invest a lot. Over and out, baby.